So in this video, we'll be discussing the concept of force. In the previous module for kinematics, we were only concerned with an object's motion. We weren't concerned with what caused that motion to happen or what caused the change in the motion to happen. And so that's where this, uh, this concept of force comes into play. When forces are unbalanced, it causes a change in an object's motion. So the reason why things happen the way they do around us are because of forces. So your textbook defines force as a push or a pull. And so this is a decent working definition. It tells you, you know, if you push on something or you pull on something, that is a force on that something. But you may have asked yourself, well, what is a push or a pull? And so that's why we need a little more general definition to, to give to force. And so the definition I came up with is a force is an interaction with an object like a push or a pull that when unbalanced causes a change in in objects motion and so what we did in this definition is we we kind of generalized the idea of force so instead of calling force a push or a pull we're now calling it an interaction which encompasses a push or a pull that when it's isolated just on its own it causes an object to change its motion so let's look at an example and connect it to this definition. So say you're going to the grocery store, you grab a cart, and you stop until the automatic door opens. And so in this case, your cart is the object, and then your hand, you're placing your hand to get onto the cart to get the, to get the cart to go, to move forward. So your hand is interacting with the cart. So your hand is applying a force, it's applying a push to the cart, and that's causing the cart to move forward. So it's causing a change in the cart's motion because your cart's starting from rest and now it has some sort of velocity. So there is a change in that cart's motion. So that's how this definition fits into a, just a common scenario you may have experienced before. And so moving on, we have the SI unit of force is the Newton, and its symbol is capital N. And so if, if you recall from module zero, there's the idea of fundamental units and then derived units. So in this case, a Newton is a derived unit. But in terms of the fundamental units, a Newton is equal to a kilogram times a meter divided by second squared. And so that is written in terms of the fundamental units. And so that may come in handy when you're solving problems and you're working through the units canceling and, and carrying your units to put it in terms of the fundamental units and not just keep it as N. And so now moving down, we were asked to categorize whether these things are forces or not forces. And so the majority of the work that you're gonna be doing with forces is identifying forces. You're going to be looking at a scenario looking at a particular object and figuring out what are the interactions happening with that object? What are the forces acting on that object? So I'm just gonna go, starting on the left column, I'm just gonna go down the list, friction. And so I would like to relate this to something that you may have experienced 
as a child where you're going down the slide. So your butt is in contact with the slide, whether it's a plastic slide or a metal slide. So it's rubbing together. So there's friction between your butt and the slide. So there's an interaction between you and that slide. And typically when it's there, if depending on how much it's rubbing, it's going to cause a change in your motion. It's going to cause you to slow down as you move down the slide. And so we would, based off of our definition, we would categorize that as a force. So friction's a force. Force of gravity. If I jump up, does gravity interact with me? Yeah, it causes me it causes me to, to speed up going down, or if I throw a ball up in the air, it causes the ball to, to speed up when it's on its way down. So there's a pulling force causing me to come back or the ball to come back to the ground. So the force of gravity fits the definition of a force. Is weight a force? So if you stand on a scale, the scale is measuring your weight force. So you, your body, your mass is, is being pulled down by gravity. And that collective force downwards is being measured by the scale. So the scale is pushing up on you to balance your force downwards. And so it's telling you how much you weigh. And so there is an interaction of your body pressing on the scale, but it's balanced, so it doesn't cause you to move. So it's still a force and fits that definition. The acceleration due to gravity, well, that's an acceleration. It's not a force. It's related to the force of gravity, but nonetheless, it is not a force. Is velocity a force? Well, velocity is velocity. You know, it, it's dealing with motion. It's not a force. Mass is mass a force. Mass just tells you how much of an object you have. Again, that's the difference between mass and weight. Weight deals with, with the collective force downward as a result of gravity and your mass. So mass is not a force. It's related to your weight. Acceleration, again, that's just acceleration. That's not a force. So for momentum, momentum, force can change momentum, but momentum itself is not a force. Inertia, so inertia, again, that a force can affect an object's inertia, but inertia is a property of the object itself, so that's not a force. Tension, you can think of a picture, a wire holding up a picture, and so that wire is pulling up on the picture. So it's interacting with that picture to keep it from falling down because of gravity. So tension is a force. Normal force. Well, that has force in the name and without going into detail, that is also a force. And then coefficient of friction. So this is related to the force of friction, but all the coefficient of friction tells you is it's a property of a certain material. So it tells you how much frictional force you will have, but it's not an actual force. It's just a number. So coefficient of friction is not a force.